two months ago, I was laying in my bed scrolling through social media and somebody that I admire and really enjoy following on Instagram and TikTok is Elise Myers. Her rawness and realness is something that you guys know I love and aspire to be here on the internet as well. I think there is value in being real. Sorry, you guys may be able to hear construction. Construction's going on outside of my studio, but we're just gonna ignore it and pretend like it's not there. Anyway, Elise Myers referenced a song and she thanked the writer of this song for their realness and their rawness in their songwriting. So I'm like, well, who's this? Because at least I love how you are real and honest and you've encouraged me to be real and honest on the internet. So let me go see who this person is. And that's where this story begins. You see, when I clicked on that link, it was Maddie Zong, a young songwriter who had written a song, You Might Not Like Me. For a while you might not like her, but I do. Someday you'll kiss a girl and you'll panic yourself just to take it back. And you'll miss the old you, but here's the deal. Someday you'll learn to keep your own secrets. And it's a song to her young self, telling her young self, you're not gonna be what you think you wanna be. And you're going to throw away your purity ring and you're gonna smoke weed and you're going to not like boys and you're gonna face the fear of disappointing other people and disappointing yourself and find out that you can love yourself regardless. And I wanted to forget about this song and I wanted to forget about the questions that it asks the church. I wanted to forget about the pressure that I felt to have better answers as a representative of you know Christians and a pastor's wife. You guys know I love the church. And so I just wanted to forget this song. I hated this heartbreaking story because I couldn't relate to it, but then I could relate to the hurt and the pressure of church or Christian culture and the disappointment that it can bring. And I'm a pastor's wife. I can't, I, I, I don't want to accept the hurt the church does, even though I know it probably better than anybody else. I myself have been very much hurt by the church. However, I don't want to accept that. I'm not saying this about my current church, but I'm saying the church at large, like worldwide. And I myself don't want to embrace that or carry the burden of that every single day because I spend every single day at the church or working for the church or supporting the church in some way through my husband. And then last night happened. Once again, I'm laying down, scrolling through social media, and Instagram at this point has learned my cookies or whatever. And it knows that I checked out Maddie Zom's song. So it's like, oh, hey, she came out with a new song. You might be interested in this. And for just a split second, the music video pops up on my Instagram. And I have this physical response. I run to Joseph and I'm like, Joseph, we need to watch this together. Because in that screen, I see young girls with taped mouths sitting in church. And I knew that there was even more I would relate to. And oh boy, Maddie has stirred the pot. All the Sundays I worried, I disappointed my mom but father picks if you just to leave the rest i heard a voice inside my head they disagree so if that wasn't god if that Now she's reached something that hits home. Because you guys know if you've been here for a while that I have struggled with women's roles in the church. And for the whole you know last year of my life, I've spent a lot of time reading about this topic. And I have worn my heart on my sleeve on the internet and I've faced criticism and I've asked a lot of questions really openly and publicly. Here Maddie highlights this very issue in the church. And while I have reached a point of reconciliation and I've shared a lot of my process with this topic on my channel, I know that this is not a good testimony to the outside world if this is how they see the church. So Joe sits down in his recliner and you know snuggled up to him and we're watching this music video and in it this song titled If It's Not God, Maddie expresses how she how she has been hurt by the church and how she has ran from the church. And that there were teachings and things in the church that she was taught that didn't sit right with her. And there was this inside voice telling her, now that's not right. How could that be true? And finally she realized it's not God, it's me. And she comes to the conclusion that she has to run from the church and save herself. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when we turned off the music video, Joe and I just sat there in silence for a good 15 seconds. And I looked deep into Joe's handsome teal blue eyes and saw the hurt of him pastorally breaking heartbreak for all the hearts, for all of the Gen Zers that he talks to every week at youth group, for all of the young people who have felt the same way, for all the old people that have felt the same way, the heartbreak over church hurt that sends somebody running 
from the church. The very place that should have been a safe place for us broken sinners to run to and to receive that teaching and that fellowship and the comfort and all of that ends up being us walking around with a big plank in our own eyes and hurting each other. Because we are sinners and because we are on the side of heaven, right? Which is not okay, but it's a very real reality. Finally, when we can gather our thoughts and our words, Joe and I heartbreakingly had to admit to each other and to ourselves that it hurts, not just because we love the church and because we're in vocational ministry, but because we can relate to. And these are some questions we've had too. These are some feelings we've had too. Not all of them, can't relate on all things, but to some degree we can relate to the church hurt and to that human desire to wanna run. I've shared before, I love running on a treadmill and just working through my frustrations or whatever. And when it comes down to it, when I'm hurt, when something doesn't sit right with me, that is all I wanna do is run from that issue. And sometimes I have to physically take myself to my treadmill and just run it off, just feel like I'm running away. And yet I put back on my high heels and my Sunday morning dress and I go back to church. Again, I'm talking hyperbolically, not about my, my church today, but about the church worldwide. And it led us to talk about in scripture, the pictures that we have of Jesus, he was perfect, but he deals with other humans that are hurting each other. I think of the woman caught in, in the midst of adultery. In John 8 verse seven, he says, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Why are we so quick in the church to pick up our stones? When they heard it, they went away one by one. Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? These people that were literally about to unlife you, does no one condemn you anymore? She said, no one. Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go from now on and sin no more. Jesus, the one who will die on the cross for our sins, looks this woman in the eyes and says, I don't condemn you. Who am I that I perpetuate this church hurt, this condemning nature when I know myself very well how much of a sinner I am? We put a lot more emphasis on the, don't you dare go sin and no more, instead of that realization that we aren't Jesus in this scenario. We are those that hypocritically pick up those rocks and we're ready to unlife somebody because of their sin. And we don't realize that we ourselves deserve the same kind of punishment. We also talked about Luke 23, when Jesus is literally in the midst of being on the cross. This sinner facing the consequences of his thievery believes that Jesus is the Messiah and says, remember me. I mean, if we were the church today and that was going on, we'd be like, who do you think you are to plead for mercy? Would we not? <laughs> if we were the church today in that scenario, we would not say what Jesus says. He says, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus doesn't make sure, you know, that he's got a perfect understanding of everything. Dude, what's your uh, view on baptism? Dude, uh, what's your standpoint on women in ministry or, or the sacrament? Jesus exemplifies this love and this grace that us, the church gets caught up in all the other things and we're not Jesus. We get so caught up in our own self-righteousness that we perpetuate this hurt like that Maddie has experienced, that you and I have both experienced. But then it got even worse. I scrolled down below the music video and saw the comments, comments after comments. Maddie herself had said, what the church doesn't realize is that when you teach a kid to sing with conviction, eventually they'll grow up and find their own. There was 45 replies when I screenshotted this. Someone else said, had an immediate physical response to seeing the girls taped mouths while the men are free. I truly thank you for healing my spirit every few weeks this summer. You are changing lives with this work. Another commented, no father picks the few just to leave the rest, which is a line in the song. And they said, is a word. This leads to our discussion about Calvinism and Arminianism, predestination and all of that. But let's be honest, Maddie picks on some of the three biggest divisive issues in the church today. The debate between Calvinism and Arminianism, women's roles in the church, and what the church is super divided about right now, the LGBTQIA discussion. Now this comment is what really struck me, actually brought me to tears. Amy Mejia says, it was always me. I was the one who pulled myself out of depression all those times. They may have convinced me God was the magician, but I was the one who held the magic. Thank you, Maddie, for healing in my heart. Not only is Maddie doing some kind of giving others this sense of healing, which is ironic because that's literally what the church is supposed to do, but they're healing from church hurt. But also there's this idea that it was me. If it wasn't God, it was me. There's this idea of like, I saved myself. And Maddie or Amy, I don't know about you guys, but I have hit that rock bottom place where even I still failed myself, that I couldn't save myself and it saved my life, that it doesn't all rely on me. 
that I have a savior to run to who is with me in the darkest valleys. I've reached a point now after watching this music video where I can't help but respond to this music video. Maddie, if you depend on yourself to the end of your days, you will only have yourself and you can't save yourself. Maddie, I'm so grateful that you have found some kind of healing from the church. And on behalf of the church, as someone who's also hurt from the church, I confess that we are so messed up and I'm so sorry. And I wanna be a light in the church and fighting against the same kind of church hurt because that is the exact opposite of what the church should be. And while I do not agree with your lifestyle or anything like that, dwelling over that is probably only gonna bring more division than truth or love. But I would encourage you that this, this you making yourself God kind of attitude, this truth relies on yourself and what you feel is right is only going to get you into trouble because I don't know about you Maddie but like I love brownies and in your song you say something along the lines of like what kind of love could be bad and I tell you my love of my brownies can be bad I'll tell you anybody's love of adult literature or media is bad for their soul I tell you there's a lot of things you can love that will be bad some love is bad now I'm not here to debate all of that I'm not arrogant to think that I've got it all figured out either but Maddie do not think that it ends with yourself because you will hit a wall and I know you must feel this that if you you rely on yourself, you will fail yourself and you do need help. You can't save yourself. I, I think you know that. I think we all know that in the depths of our heart and our soul. The redemption isn't just found in yourself. In your previous song that bothered me so much that I wanted to forget, you wrote a love letter to your old self, to your child self. You said, I, I might disappoint you. I may not be what you want me to be, Maddie. Run like your childlike self to the cross and truly ask Jesus these questions. Because the church, we don't have good answers. We're sinners just like you. We're broken just like you. But we do know the one who is the answer. And Maddie, it can't end with you. But seek him. He is exactly what you long for. I sent this music video to a couple of the young adults who have recently graduated out of our youth program that we've known since they were like in middle school. And one responded with this. Now this young girl is very tied to the church. She says, I think there is just a general feeling that the church seems to abandon people and their struggles when it gets too hard or too messy to help out. And boy, oh boy, is that so true. And if I'm gonna be honest with myself and be honest with Maddie, be honest with this song and truly face it head on and not just shove it in a corner and try and forget about it. Yeah, it is easier to abandon the hard questions. It is easy to do the same exact thing with our problematic people in our congregations. It's easier to just ignore them. Like that scene in Maddie's music video where she's sitting on the bleachers and these girls are talking and leaving her out and kind of avoiding her. And I think we've all felt that in the church or we felt like our questions were ignored in the church. You see, I think this song is healing for those who have been hurt by the church. Also calling out the church for not loving like Jesus. We spend so much time condemning and speaking truth and love, but it's really like lacking any love and we're just not even speaking. We're just like pounding truth down people's throats who didn't even ask for it. We really need to take a step back and look at this new generation that's coming up of young people who are flooding, like leaving, like sprinting out of the church, who are hurt and who have felt like their questions were ignored, their struggles were belittled and their identity was trashed because the church is where they're supposed to hear the best news. And yet this is where generation after generation, hundreds of thousands of young people, at least in the Western church, I can't speak for the whole world, are facing intense brokenness and fleeing from the church. You guys know here at How to Faith the Life, we believe the Bible is true. And if we believe the Bible is true and what it says is true, we are gonna be faithful to what the Bible says. And if we're faithful to what the Bible says, it will do its good work because it's alive and active and cuts like a two-edged sword. Then we can trust the scriptures to change us. We don't need to change each other. We don't need to change the scriptures. If we believe the Bible is true and we're faithful to the Bible, watch as it changes us. You see, Jesus doesn't assume everyone else to be like him, sinless and God, <laughs> and he also doesn't try and force change onto their lives. How could the church, how could I live that same kind of way? That love that he's shown me. I am that woman thrown at his feet with my life on the line that he has looked into my eyes and said, Faith, go and sin no more. I no longer condemn you. Though your life has condemned yourself, though your brokenness, though your sinfulness has condemned yourself, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now I know I've hit on a lot of hot topics, so please give each other grace in the comments and please give me grace in the comments. I don't claim to have it all figured out. But Maddie Zom's song, If It's Not God, needed a response. And I don't think Maddie will ever see this, but I think what's more important that the church does. How many times have I looked at someone outside of my windows over here? 
just today alone and judged them. Judged what they were wearing or judged how they were acting or where they were headed rather than looked at them with the love of Jesus Christ. And how often is my entire life permeated by judging rather than loving? All the while, my life is literally shaped and transformed and literally focuses all day long on the church and God's love and in God's grace on the cross for me. How dare I engage the world with anything but the love that Jesus showed me? You see, this has been a bit of a story that I've shared with you, this process of coming across to Maddie. But the story doesn't end here. The story is continued by the church changing its ways and making a point to love rather than judge. The Lord says, how will we be known? Our love. And we are not known by our love anymore. We're known by our judgment. Matthew 5 reminds us, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. I don't hear blessed are the judgers or the condemners. Blessed are those who are warriors for my truth and go out into the culture and condemn everybody and make them feel like trash for believing something different. I think sometimes the church has missed the entire thing because we get so caught up in man's rules and we forget exactly who Jesus is, who he was, and what the gospels show us about who he is. We have these perceptions like from Jesus movies and things like that. So go watch these videos to understand who Jesus was in the gospels in particular and wrestle through exactly what his culture was like and how he encountered it. And I'll see you guys in that video.